Hi, and welcome to this video about the for loop in Python. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is first of all demonstrate the for loop, which you uh, probably know and love and use all the time, and then show a few uh, more advanced use cases of the for loop with the, the continue, break, and else keywords. And finally, I will demonstrate how the for loop is built on top of the so-called iterator protocol, which is a more formal protocol in Python. Uh, and I will demonstrate that by showing how you can essentially emulate a for loop with a while loop, just for demonstration purposes, not because you want to do that in real life. Now, so without further ado, let's start. Here we have a toy data set that consists of some happy hardcore acts. Now, if you weren't raised in the 90s in the Netherlands or Germany, then I will like, introduce this concept for you. So happy hardcore is a genre of what you might uh, generously describe as music. And there were famous acts, acts such as DJ Paul Elstock, right? So the name of the act is the key in this dictionary. Uh, the nationality of DJ Paul Elstock was Dutch. And one of, the, one of DJ Paul Elstock's big, stack's build, big hits was Life is Like a Dance. So the tuple of the nationality and the big hit is the value, right? So we, we have a key value mapping and that makes up our dictionary. We also have some other famous acts such, such as Scooter with their hit Hypa Hypa, uh, Tokyo Ghetto Pussy, I Kiss Your Lips a Thousand Times, Take You Away to Paradise, etc. And of course, Techno Hat, uh, I Want to Be a Hippie uh, and I Want to Get Stoned. Um, so look them up on YouTube, they're good, good fun. Now, so if we have an, a dick like this, then you probably know that you can loop through it, right? You can iterate through it. So to iterate in the context of Python is just a synonym for to loop. So what we can say for act in happy hardcore acts, uh, print act. And then we get our acts, right? So you see, if you iterate through a dictionary, what you iterate through are the keys, right? The things that are here on the left-hand side. We can do some slightly more fancy stuff. We can also iterate through the keys and the values at the same time, which is already quite nice. So we can say for act comma info in happy hardcore acts. Then we need to specify that we want to get both the keys and the values. So we say dot items. So the dot items method of a dictionary gives you a list of key value tuples. And then we can say print act comma info. So you see that this works right now. We get the name and we also get the nationality and the big hit. We can even be more fancy, and this is essentially a, a, a use case of what is called uh, uh, iterator unpacking. We can unpack this info in one go. So we can say, okay, we're not going to put info here, but we're going to unpack it into a nationality, oh, nationality, and a hit. Right? So we extract all the information from our dictionary in one sweet loop. And then we can write something like, okay, up. Uh, was a Dutch, oh, I need to put it between quotes, of course, was a hmm, act and their big hit was up, act, nationality, comma, hit. All right, that should work, right? So if I run this, DJ Paul Elstack was a Dutch act and their big hit was life is like a dance. June was a German act and their big hit was hardcore vibes. Hardcore vibes is actually a genuinely good song. Um, so this, this probably, you know, now let's move on to the, the continue statement, which you can use in a loop. So what does continue do? Well, continue is essentially a soft break. It breaks one cycle of a loop, but does not break the loop in its entirety. Um, now, and one use case for using the for, a continue statement is to sort of skip certain, uh, certain things. So say for example, um, that we, what I will copy this. Say that we want to have only the German hits, right? Or the, only the German acts. Then you could say for, oh, what, sorry, if nationality is German, and then print this out, indent this, print this out. This works, right? There's nothing wrong with it. It just is a way to, to filter out so that you get only the German acts. But it can become a bit messy. I think it is not semantically not very clean. It's not doesn't look very nice, right? Especially if you have multiple criteria, right? Say if nationality is German, and act uh, dot starts with starts with the D. So we want to have all the acts that start with start with the D and are German. Up. Did I make a mistake? 
uh, oh yeah, semicolon, colon. Right, so now we have only June, June. Uh, and then say, uh, and vibes in, right, in hit. So we have three criteria, right? The nationality has to be German, the act has to start with D, and the vibes has to be in the hit name. Now, um, this works, there's nothing really wrong with it, but I think you can use the continue keyword to rewrite this so that it becomes a bit, bit clearer and that you really explicitly uh, indicate all the criteria. So you can say, if the nationality is not German, so we reverse everything, continue. So essentially you're saying, if the nationality is not German, ignore this. If not act starts with D, continue. So if the act doesn't start with the D, ignore this. If vibes not in hit, continue. And then we can dedent this so that it goes back to the original indentation. Now, if I run this, it does exactly the same thing. It's equivalent code. But I think using a continue statement in this way has some advantage in the sense that it makes your code a little bit more readable, right? It re makes it very explicit that we have three criteria, each of which calls our loop to continue. Now, it's also a bit longer, right? So we're sacrificing a few lines, but in many cases, continue can imp increase the readability of your code. And that's the main function of continue. Essentially, you can everything you can do with continue, you can also do with if statements, but continue is usually nicer or sometimes nicer. Um, now, what is break? Well, break is breaking the loop completely. So let's take again what we have here. Let's copy it here. And then say that we do, okay, if nationality is German, break. Now we only get DJ Paul Elstock is a Dutch act and their big hit was Life is Like a Dance, right? So at the moment that our, our loop encounters a German nationality in our act, it breaks the loop and it doesn't continue with any of the other cycles, right? So continue is like a soft break and break is like a hard break. Um, it can be quite useful. To break a break especially one use case that you will encounter sometimes is that you have an iterator that is for example infinite or so long that it is practically infinite but it is possible in python to have infinite iterators right so lists list like things that are actually infinite and if you are looping through infinite things you will need a break statement because otherwise you will enter an infinite loop in this particular example it's not very useful but now then we have the else block that's also very interesting and is related to the break. So let's copy this. If I paste it here, up, and then I say else print uh, no German act found, exclamation mark. So if the nationality is German, I say print German act found, else no German act found. Now, what happens here? We first encounter DJ Paul Elstock, which is Dutch, right? So we're not breaking the loop yet. Then we encounter the second ad, act uh, doom in this case um, and we print out German act found and then we break. Now the definition of the else statement in a for loop is that it is only executed when no break has occurred. Right? So the else statement here is not executed because a break has occurred. If say that we're filtering for something that's actually not in a list, so say that if nationality is Austrian, I'm sure they made lovely happy hardcore in Austria too. Uh, Austrian act found and else no Austrian act found. We just don't have any Austrian acts in our in our dictionary, right? So now we get, we loop through all our acts and then at the end we, we, we print out no Austrian act found. So print no Austrian act found. So else is executed always and only if no break occurred during the execution of your for loop. Now this can be quite interesting and useful. Um, it is also a little bit counterintuitive and difficult to reason about. If you use an else statement in this way, uh, be aware that a lot of people will not understand your code because a lot of people don't know that you can use else in that way, this way. But there are particular use cases in which it can be very useful. Basically, if you have some kind of code that you want to execute, uh, if everything went okay, right? So say that you're looping, as in this case, say that, that we, we really wanna make sure for some reason that there is no Austrian act. Uh, and then this is basically our check, right? And this, what happens here is what happens if our check uh, passes, right? So it is kind of code that you can execute when a check passes. So those are basically the three keywords that you have uh, with the for statement. So you have to the continue, the soft break, 
the break, which is the hard break, and the else, and the else is whatever is the else is executed when no break occurred. And of course, we have the for statement, which is also a statement. Now, so that's all you need to know and all that there is to know essentially about the for loop. But let's take 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 a quick look under the hood. So the for loop is built on top of the so-called iterator protocol. So if we have an iterator and an iterator is anything that you can loop through, then I will type essentially what the for loop does. What the for loop does is first of all, I is iter and then the thing that you want to iterate through. So in this, in our case, the happy hardcore acts. What does it do? Well, iter takes an iterable object such as a dictionary or a list or a set or whatever, numpy array, and it turns it into sort of a, an, an iterator object that is directly useful for iteration. It does not really have a specific kind of name. Let's call it the iterator I here. And this is the object that we're going to loop through. Then we enter an infinite loop while true. And then what the for loop does is it tries to get, in our case, an act from our iterator. And it does so by saying act is next I. And then we let's print it out, print the act out. Um, up, you see that this works, right? We get, we get it, we get all the things, but then at some point we have exhausted our iterator, right? We've processed all the acts and then we get a stop iteration. Now the stop iteration is an exception. It's kind of an error message, but it's not really an error message. It's more of a way for Python to signal to itself that the iterator has been exhausted. So what happens under the hood is that this is the executed in a try except statement. And then we say stop iteration, uh, break, and then we run it. So this is essentially what you see here is essentially the same thing as saying for act in happy hardcore acts, uh, print act. So what is happening? We Python takes the happy hardcore acts, turns it into an iterable object, goes into an infinite loop because our iterable can in principle be infinite. Our iterator of happy hardcore X is fortunately not infinite. There are only a few, but there are infinite uh, itera iterators. It gets an element from the iterator, right? An act in our case, uh, prints it out and stops when a stop iteration exception has occurred, right? So this is a little glimpse behind the hood of how actually a for loop is somehow implemented. I, I presume actually that the for loop is implemented in C code and not like this in actual Python code, but Conceptually, this is exactly what happens. Now, with that, I would like to thank you for your attention.